night, um, we're going to spend some time together, all of us uh, sort of zooming in on uh, three truths about Jesus from the Christmas story that we've been thinking about so far. So if you're uh, a grown-up, I want to particularly encourage you to get one of these open in front of you, a Bible, as we look at uh, Luke chapter 1. And it may be that actually uh, some of the children here, some of the young people are sat with Bibles near them, that they can follow along as well. We're going to be looking at that story, uh, page 1000. Um, and 25 in the church Bibles. Um, Three wonderful truths about baby Jesus from Luke uh, chapter 1. And the first is, he was a real baby. He was a real baby. Let's recap some of the Christmas stories so far. The angel Gabriel (coughs) appears to Mary, and he tells Mary that Mary is going to have a baby. Verse 30 of the chapter that we looked at, says this, the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son. You are to call him Jesus. Now, this bit is a bit unusual, isn't it? Um, Normally, when parents find out they're going to have a baby, they don't have an angel appear to them and tell them they're going to have a baby. This is the unusual bit, but lots of the Christmas story is actually fairly ordinary, fairly normal. Mary was an ordinary, normal lady, wasn't she? We've been thinking about that, as the children told us. She was an ordinary woman who lived 2,000 years ago in an ordinary place called Nazareth. But sometimes in the Christmas story, we might forget that. We might forget that Mary was just an ordinary person. So children, help me out here. What's wrong with these pictures of Mary? What's wrong with these pictures of Mary, do you think? Anybody have any ideas? What do you think? A yellow yellow hat. Yeah, that's right. A halo. Very good. She didn't go around with a little yellow hat. That's right. She didn't go around Nazareth 2,000 years ago wearing a halo over her head, did she? That's right. She just looked very ordinary. She was an ordinary person, an ordinary woman. In fact, you can see as much in verse 30. Because the angel said, Mary, you have found favor with God. Now, in the New Testament, that word favor is normally translated grace. You have found grace with God. Now, Mary was an ordinary person. She loved God very much. She was very humble. She wanted to listen to what God said. She loved God's word, but she was an ordinary person like we are, an ordinary lady. In fact, the angel says, you found grace, found favor with God. She didn't have the Son of God being born from her because she was particularly holy or special. She was an ordinary woman, like we are. And in fact, the baby grew like ordinary babies grow. Now, sometimes when ladies are having a baby, they sometimes feel poorly in the morning. Maybe Mary had morning sickness. Maybe Mary felt baby Jesus kicking in her tummy. Maybe Mary felt baby Jesus having hiccups. Baby Jesus would have had to have fed in an ordinary, normal way. Even his name, uh, the angel says, you're to call him, verse 31, you're to call him Jesus. Even his name was normal. Now, children, do you have anybody called Jesus in your class? No. It's a little bit unusual in this country. But back then, 2,000 years ago, there were probably lots of people called Jesus. It was an ordinary name, an ordinary baby boy's name. And he was born into an ordinary family. Verse 32 says, the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. Now, you might think that's a bit confusing because who was Jesus' father? Who's his dad? God. And who was married to Mary? Joseph. And yet, verse 32 says, his father, David. That's because King David lived a thousand years before Jesus. And the angel says Jesus is going to be born into David's family. David's going to be like his father, his ancestor. Jesus is going to be born in that family. So who was David then? Anybody know who David was? He was a king, yes. He fought Goliath. Well done, he fought Goliath. Let's have a look. Very good. David was a king who lived a thousand years before Jesus, and he fought Goliath. David was an ordinary person. He won a great battle against Goliath there with his slingshot, but he was just an ordinary person. And the angel said, Jesus is going to be born into this family, the family of King David. And you know what? There will be lots of people who were born in this family 
from the time of King David to when Jesus was born. Because there were a thousand years between David and then Jesus being born. But the angel said, Jesus is going to be born into this family. He was a real baby from a real person in a real family. Now, imagine that you were, I can see some of you dressed up as shepherds. Imagine that we were with the shepherds on the hills, and we go to see baby Jesus. Mary has just given birth. Mary and Joseph are there, and we come in with the shepherds and the sheep, and we see, there he is, (laughs) baby Jesus lying, lying in the manger. If we saw him, we would think that he looked very, very cute, but we would think he just looks like an ordinary baby because he was a real baby just like us, like everybody else. But if he was a real baby and he looked so ordinary, why do we celebrate his birth 2,000 years later? Why do people around the world celebrate the birth of Jesus? Why don't we celebrate my birth? Why isn't Brian Muss a great festival around the world? Anybody know? Why? No, you, you, you go for it. Well, let, let me tell you. He was a special baby. He was a real baby, but he was a special baby. He was no ordinary baby, was he? Verse 35, the angel says, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. The baby growing in Mary's tummy was the Son of God. Do you remember God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? And God the Son was going to be born. God the Son was about to become a little baby, take on human flesh, and be born. Just think about that for a second. The God who had always existed... The God who made the sun, the God who made the moon, the stars, the planets, the God who made the world in every body and everything in it was about to enter the world that he had made. The God who is so big, the whole universe could not contain him, was about to be growing the size of a grape in Mary's tummy. The Son of God who made Mary, was about to be born from Mary. Isn't this extraordinary? He was no ordinary baby. He was totally, fully God and totally, fully man, fully human. He was a real baby, a human baby like we are, but he was also God himself. He didn't lose any of his Godness, if you can put it like that. His attributes of God remained the same. And so in in some ways, this baby was very normal. He learned to walk. He learned to say mama and dada. He had to have his nappy changed. He had to learn to read. He had to learn his spellings. And yet at the same time, he was the God who had always existed. He was true wisdom itself. He was sustaining, keeping the whole world going whilst having his nappy changed. Extraordinary, isn't it? The eternal word had to learn how to form words in his baby mouth. He was fully God with a human nature and a divine nature. How could this happen? Verse 35 tells us, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the one to be born will be called the Son of God. This was an amazing work of God. This was the power of God. Mary was probably just a teenager. She didn't have a husband. This was a miracle. Now, who knows what a miracle is? What's a miracle? Yes, yeah, something happened that no one knew how it would happen. That's exactly right. Very good. It's something that happens which is impossible for us to do, 
It would be impossible for normal human beings to do, and yet it's the work of God showing his power and his might. Jesus was a special baby, a miracle by the power of God, a miracle in Mary's tummy. Now, you might think, well, some of this is very familiar. I've heard some of this before. You've heard the children performing it. You've heard them singing about it. We hear about it year upon year. Why would God do this, this extraordinary miracle of the Son of God coming into our world? Well, verse 32 gives us a little hint. The angel says, The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, He says, he will be great and called the son of the most high. He will be called great. The angel says he is going to be great. This special baby who was being born in the world was going to do great things, was going to do amazing, extraordinary things. God had a special plan for the baby. What could that be? Well, that takes us to our third and our final wonderful truth about Jesus He was a royal baby, a royal baby. What does the angel say? Verse 32, the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. He will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. The baby born in the manger was a king, a royal baby born in David's family. So what do kings do? Help me out. What do kings do? What's the job description of a king? They rule. That's right. They rule. Anybody else have any ideas? Yeah? They, they what? They boss over people. Very good. Very good. Yeah? They judge. Yeah, that's right. What do you think? What's the job? Say again. They're the boss. That's right. A king is somebody who rules over a place, who's in charge of a kingdom, a place where they're honored and celebrated as king. And the job is... Particularly in the olden days, the job of a king was to protect the people, was to go out in victory and win victory for the people, to look after the people in their kingdom, to be in charge of them. That's why Jesus came. That's why Jesus is called great in this passage. He was born to be a king, to give his people victory to protect his people, to go out and win them the victory. So how do you think, boys and girls, help us out. Some of the parents are confused at this point. How does Jesus give his people victory and defeat their enemies? Victory, Victory win for them. How does he win the battle for them and defeat our enemies? What do you think? He He does miracles. Very good, yeah? He died on the cross. This is the extraordinary thing. The Son of God comes into our world, is born to win the victory for his people by defeating our enemy of our wrongdoing. (coughs) Our greatest enemy of sin and death, all the wrong, all the bad things in the world, the enemies which no normal king would be able to defeat, he comes to defeat by giving himself, by dying on the cross so that we could be forgiven. Jesus was placed in the crib so that he could one day go to the cross, so that he could die for all that we've done wrong, so that we could be forgiven. That's how he wins the victory for his people, by defeating our enemies. That's why he's great. That's why the Son of God came. That's why we celebrate Christmas. Isn't Christmas worth celebrating? That the Son of God came into our world to win victory for his people by giving himself, by laying his life down for us. Now, who here enjoys celebrating Christmas? Who's looking forward to Christmas? Me. Yeah, lots of people. Very good. A few of the grown-ups as well. <laughs> lots of us. But as much as we enjoy the celebrations at Christmas, at some stage, Christmas comes to an end. At some stage, you've got to take down the Christmas tree. It's a bit weird to have it up in February. You've got to take it down. At some stage, you've got to put all the decorations back in the loft, back in their box, and not see them again for another year. At some stage, you'll have to go back to school after the Christmas holidays. You have to go back to work. At some stage, Christmas ends. But Jesus is still going to be the king. Because look at what it says in verse 33. 
He will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. Christmas comes to an end, but Jesus as the king, he will always be king. It says he will, it will never end. He will rule and reign forever. How can Jesus be king forever? How can Jesus be the king forever, children? Do you think? Yeah? Because he never dies anymore. That's right. He died and he rose again to new life, never to die again. And therefore, he is king forever. Now, this is a picture of the queen who sadly died last year. That was sad, wasn't it? Even the best kings and queens at some stage will die. But Jesus is the king who has died and risen again to new life, to eternal life, and will never die again. Jesus has eternal life, and that means he can be the king forever. A king far greater than any other king, far greater even than King David in the Old Testament. Jesus is a king who will live forever, who will reign forever. And that means for us, boys and girls, grown-ups as well, if we trust in this Jesus, if we believe in him and look to him, because he lives forever, we also will live forever. We will have eternal life with him in heaven forever because we've got Jesus. We are joined to him. We trust in him. And because he's the king forever, we too will live forever. That can be true for each one of us. This is what Christmas is all about. This is why we celebrate it. The Son of God has come. He has come. Though he was a real baby, he looked like an ordinary baby. He was nevertheless God's Son who came to win the victory for his people. Now you might think, final thought, this is surely so extraordinary, so amazing. Could this really happen? Could we have eternal life with God through Jesus. How can we believe it? It sounds too good to be true, doesn't it? Verse 37 tells you why you can believe it. No word from God will ever fail. God has promised it. God has promised it. He has said it. No word from God can fail. If God says it, it will happen. Let's pray, and then we will sing. <coughs> Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for Jesus. Thank you that he came into this world to rescue us, to win victory for his people. Thank you that it is true when the angel said that he is great and the Son of the Most High. We pray that each one of us in this room, from the very youngest to the very oldest, would put our trust in Jesus and one day live forever with him. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's stand. We'll sing our final song, Joy to the World. The gospel message is a message of joy. Let's stand. Let's sing enthusiastically of the Christmas story.